This is Craig with Carsultan Advisory. This video we're going to prepare you for writing the Excel 2016 core exam by walking you through the practice tasks for Objective 4.2, Performing Conditional Operations. Let's get started on Part 2. So as I mentioned in the first video for this section, that I, I think it's a really important section for Excel users to understand, but I don't think it's particularly well written. And uh, I don't think the examples are great. So we're going to go through the, the tasks that they've required of us. But I hope you'll uh, watch uh, uh, through a little bit longer than that because I'm going to go through some other functions and, and give you hopefully a little bit of additional insight on how to use these uh, more properly than what they've demonstrated. So they, what they want us to do is to go into cell G28. And uh, just for fun, we'll use our uh, go to function and type G28 to make sure we're in the right spot and you don't have to hunt around looking for things. And they want us to use the count if function here. So before we're gonna do that, we're gonna start, we used a count function in a previous video. So I'm just gonna start off with count and use that. I'm gonna use the same range, uh, that's D10. And I can just type that in, I don't have to highlight it with my mouse through I19. So what a count function does is it uh, is going to count any cell that has numbers in it. All right, so it's take a look in that range. It says, okay, there's 18 cells that have numbers in it. Perfect. Um, but it doesn't discriminate at all. Um, it doesn't care if they're uh, above zero, under zero, really big, really small, um, whether there's a billion in the cell or, you know, one-tenth of a thousandth in the cell, it's still going to count in that count if, or in that count. So a count if is going to give us a little bit more control over that. Uh, so let's use the one in the example here. We're going to type count if. We'll hit tab to uh, pick the formula. We're going to use the same range, which is D10 through I19. And the difference here is that we have to give a criteria, and that's the error message. I, I didn't give my criteria. So in this case, it's only going to count if the cells match a certain particular characteristic. In this case, what we want our characteristic to be is greater than zero, and they've specified that in our in our question. So there's our greater than sign. Here's our zero. Now, do note that the criteria does have to be inside quotation marks, uh, and and in order for it to work properly. If you don't have the quotes and you hit enter, it's going to give you an error message, and that maybe is what you've experienced in the past. So we'll hit enter. Perfect. Well, we have 18 as well. So. In the example they've given us, using the uh, using the count if really doesn't give us any more information than just using a basic count function. So it's not, in my opinion, a great example. But let's let's make this maybe a little bit more practical. Uh, give it a little bit more power. So what we've done has satisfied the question. If it's on the exam, you can stop there. It doesn't have to make sense. But I want you to be uh, uh, very competent Excel users and not just kind of scratching the surface here. So let's let's modify this. Um, so instead of being greater than zero, um, I don't. Maybe I want to change that. Maybe I only want to know if an expense is greater than ten dollars, or greater than a hundred dollars, or greater than a thousand dollars. So and, and I don't want to have to go back into my formula every time. So what we're going to do is change this so that instead of zero, it's going to reference a cell. So to do that, I'm going to delete the zero. Now I need to leave the quotation marks on either side of the operator. So I'm going to leave those there. I'm going to navigate outside them, put an ampersand, which is an, an and sign. And then I'm going to choose a cell, uh, the one right next to it. OK, so now what it's saying is that it's going to look in the same range. It's going to look greater than. And what is it going to be greater than? Well, instead of 0, it's going to be greater than the value in H28. So let's hit Enter and try this out. All right. So if this cell is zero, now in an earlier video, we talked about setting, selecting an input so that we know that this is an input cell. So let's do that just for best practices. Again, these standard styles aren't great. Here is our calculation. So we'll highlight that with a calculation option. All right, but now um, a user is gonna know that this orange cell is the one that they need to put their value into. So how many are greater than zero? Well, 18 of them are. Well, how many are greater than $10? Still 18. What about uh, $20? Oh, only 14. How many are bigger than 100? Eight. How many are bigger than uh, 500? 
too. So so now without having to go in and change that formula every single time, uh, we've created one that allows us to uh, have a, a variable, which is that orange cell. And by changing the value of that variable, the, it's automatically going to give us a count of the values that we want. So that's uh, the count function. Let's take a look at uh, sum. Um, now, a lot of this is going to work the same, uh, but the behavior is going to be different. So the syntax, how you write the formula, is going to be the same. This, the syntax is going to be different. So let's, uh, let's go over here. And uh, let's just start with a, to a simple sum function. So we started with a count before. This time we're going to do a sum. We're going to use the same range of D10 through I19. All right, if I can type, that'll help. All right, so if we sum that up, it's 2643. And, and look here, it, it, uh, it matches up for us. Uh, so now let's use a sum if function. Uh, so in the cell below, which is J28, we are going to put sum if. So now it's only going to sum if a particular given um, situation is true. So we're going to use the same range again, D10 through I19. Excuse me. Um, all right, let me start this again here. I'm going to enter right into the formula bar. So D10, I19, live television here. You never know what you're going to get. Uh, and our criteria, well, let's start off with greater than zero, So, which is what we had done before. Okay, we should, if I think properly here, get the same number. So yes, yeah, so 2643, we will make that a number format so that it, it's more similar to what the other ones are. Um, so that's kind of our, our next stage. So what if we only want to add, though, values that are greater than a certain amount? Um, so what we can do is we'll modify this the same way we did the previous formula. So instead of greater than zero, we'll get rid of that zero. We'll add our ampersand and we will select a cell right next door. So in this case, K28. So now it is only going to add values that are greater than a certain amount. So since that cell is blank, we'll mark it in our input style. Okay. So that way we're, we know which one we want to change. So if I put zero, it's going to add all the values. So in this case, there was two expenses greater than 500. So now let's do 500. So just those two expenses that are greater than 500 add up to 1151. So a, a large amount of our total expenses are just from those two big ones. Seems logical. All right, so so we could change this. So we could actually say, now we only want to know what is less than that value. So anything that's less than 500 uh, adds up to 1492. So just a, a couple little tweaks we can make to those formulas. Now, uh, again, you would want to have some text description to let people know what this box does. So in this case, we want to know uh, uh, this would be sum of values less than... 500. So if we wanted to, we can actually, actually, I could drag this. Okay. Uh, and we'll make this right justified. Oops, on the wrong cell. So we'll move this one right next to it. Make it right justified. And then let's put equals. We'll make that one right justified as well. And then I'm just going to drag this over rather than retype it. And we'll give it a little bit more space so you can see the result. So the sum of values less than 500 equals 1492. Let's try sum of values less than 20. So our, our small expenses only equal 62. So that, you know, again, by using Excel, um, sorry, I'll make that so that you can see it. Uh, sum of 20 is equals 62. So a, a couple little tweaks that we can do. And so now we've taken those from just kind of useless functions, which were what were in the samples into to making something that that maybe you can see now how that might help you in your work for what you get paid to do. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Carsultan Advisory.